quiso dejar en ridículo al activista conservador, poniendo sobre la mesa frases que él nunca expresó. Matt Walsh le preguntó cómo llegó a saber que era una mujer y la respuesta fue muy inesperada e ilógica y lo verás en este video. Durante una ponencia del mencionado activista, un hombre que se autoidentifica como mujer, quiso hacerle una pregunta y a su vez mostrarle supuestas pruebas de que estaba equivocado en cuanto a lo que él afirmaba sobre los hombres que se auto perciben como mujeres. Mira el video completo y dime si Matt Walsh tiene razón o no. Pero antes, si te gusta este tipo de contenido suscríbete a nuestro canal, tenemos la meta a mediano plazo de llegar a 100.000 suscriptores. Sin mayor dilación, empecemos. Hi Matt, uh, I'm transgender, I'm born and raised here in New Mexico, I have a graduate degree in information technology, marketing, business and finance. Uh, I own my own home, I pay taxes, I have a six-figure job, I'm a respected professional in Albuquerque, uh, I'm a mother. Uh, my life experience is that I'm an awesome person, I am well-liked, uh, I'm responsible, and I think I'm pretty cool. Uh, You touched on something. You said something earlier that for you, when somebody calls you a man, it doesn't phase you because, like, you just know that you're a man. Uh, that was interesting to me because I feel the same way about my identity as a woman. My question leading up to this, you've asserted that no one would ever see me as a woman, that nobody would ever see or could see a transgender person as a woman and yet i have dozens of friends from diverse backgrounds women from the reservation a woman from japan uh several immigrant women i have my co-workers i have my boss my vp my ceo all respecting me as a woman uh, my family my long-term friends who are actually here with me I, all of these people assure me, like, I'm a woman. They'll tell me, girl, like, there is no way you are a man. They why, see me as a woman. Why? So the question, okay. how can you assert that nobody would ever see me as a woman when my material experience tells me you're wrong? Okay. It's interesting that that's the part of my talk you chose to ask a question about because that's not in my talk at all. Um, I don't believe I said that no one would ever see you as a woman. I mean, it's possible, I suppose, that you could fool someone. Now, you brought this up, so I have to tell you that I, you brought this up. You've, you've put your identity on the table for conversation. And so I'm going to say you, you wouldn't fool me at all. I mean, I see a man 100%. Um, and I think that most people would. Now, The, the, fact, the fact that you have people in your life who are saying to you, oh, you're totally a woman, it's exactly what I'm talking about. No one in my life has ever once said to me, you're totally a man, Matt. You know, if, my, if, 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 if a friend of mine called me on the phone and said, listen, Matt, I want you to know you're really a man, I would think that there was something wrong with him. I would say, why are you saying that at all? It doesn't make any sense. So the fact that this is a conversation to begin with tells me, it only, it only proves the point that I'm trying to make, that, the, that your identity, even in your own mind, is up for, it's something that you need to be assured of. Now, what I, what I would like to ask you, again, because you're standing here, and, and so uh, you've brought your identity on the table for discussion. So uh, how, did you, how do you know that you're a woman? Uh, it was first when I heard transgender persons describe their experience in their own words. And this was only about two years ago. Uh, hearing somebody describe things, it was a woman from like England, describing her experience, her childhood, uh, her teenage years. And it blew my mind to be listening to her because it was just some podcast that I was listening to while I was like doing laundry. But it blew my mind to hear somebody so eloquently and precisely describe things that I had experiences What that I had experienced. What did they say? Um, okay, so I am honestly hesitant. I know that you touched earlier about the difficulty that transgender women might have in describing their identity, but I want to state 
I honestly don't feel that you would engage in this conversation in good faith. Then why are and you here? So, why did you stand up to talk to me if you don't want to have a conversation? You're, you're saying that you discovered that you're a woman. I'm asking you how you did. That's a very fair question. Okay, okay. How do you know that you're a woman? That's fine. All right. So first of all, listening to transgender people, and it was like, okay, this is a one-off, you know, one person describing these things. Um, things like looking at yourself in the mirror and not recognizing yourself. Uh, hearing compliments, like you are such an example, like a positive masculine role model. And just hearing that and being like, you know, it feels like they're talking about somebody else. Um, it means feeling alone, even when you're surrounded by guys, even when you have a lot of friends, and I was active in like Boy Scouts, I'm an Eagle Scout. Uh, I had great masculine role models my whole life, and yet I never felt like I belonged. I felt welcome and well, included. Why, why does that make you a woman? Uh, because As opposed I, to just a, a man who doesn't get along with some other men, or a man who's, who's, who's depressed, or a man who doesn't feel at home totally in his body, which by the way is a, is a pretty universal human experience. Everybody goes through it at one time or another. So, so in what way does that make you a woman though? And you, you, it, it's interesting, you're, you're telling me that you listen to the experiences of other transgender people. Well, yeah. But what about women? So you, you're because you are trans women are women, you would say, right? I would say that. Yeah, exactly the same. Yes. Okay. Well, then why well, do you need to hear the testimony of trans quote unquote trans women? Like how, how, how you pick any, any actual woman in this room? In, in what way do you know that you belong in the same category as them? Uh, I know because they tell me. So here was the, you need them to tell you what you are women. Yes. I trust the opinions of the women around and me. If most women, it's incredible. You might try it sometime. If most women voted and said they don't see you as a woman, would you say I'm not a woman anymore? If who? If most women voted and said they don't see you as a woman anymore, would you then relent and say I'm not a woman? I would say most people on the planet have no idea who I am. I'm going to trust the opinions of the people who've spent their lives with me. So, you, But you are relying on other people to tell you who you are, is what we're establishing. For context. I know you will like to think, I know you like to say, um, I know you like to say, uh, everybody's raw, rawing and supporting transgender people and yet they're still killing themselves, etc. Um, but I'm standing here in a room full of people applauding you and asking questions like, how can I like put out legislation here in New Mexico, you know, my home state I grew up in, to try to reverse transgenderism? Like, I'm not safe. And it how are you wasn't... not safe? You just said you're standing in a room with people who disagree with you and you're perfectly fine. So how are you not safe? Like, I, okay, look, we're, we're going round and round. <laughs> you, you, you don't want to answer any of the questions. Maybe we'll, we'll just, we'll end with this because we're talking about womanhood. So people can probably shout out the question I'm going to ask you right now. Okay. But uh, you know that you're a woman. Yes. What is that? Uh, so gender is a social thing. It only I don't makes want to sense hear that. What is a woman? What no. is a woman? What is a woman? The word, word woman, define in the dictionary. Go. A woman is somebody who is included and respected and seen and participates in society, recognized by other women. If you speak with women... Circular definition. That's my... whatever. Okay. Del video hay muchos puntos que tocar. Empecemos por mencionar un detalle ocurrido al principio de este. Hablar de los logros personales sin que se lo hayan preguntado puede tener diversas razones, tanto positivas como negativas. La persona podría estar compartiendo sus logros porque se siente orgullosa de sus éxitos y quiere celebrarlos con otros. Esto puede ser una manera de compartir alegría y logros personales. En algunos casos, hablar constantemente de los propios logros sin que se lo hayan preguntado puede ser indicativo de un comportamiento narcisista, donde la persona busca constantemente admiración y atención. Al compartir logros, la persona puede estar buscando fortalecer la conexión con los demás. Compartir experiencias personales puede construir la confianza y fomentar relaciones más sólidas. Paradojamente, algunas personas pueden compartir sus logros como una forma de encubrir inseguridades subyacentes. Utilizan estos logros como una máscara para ocultar sus dudas o miedos. Al hablar de logros sin provocación, la persona puede estar tratando de competir constantemente con los demás, buscando destacarse y ser percibida como superior. 
Hablar de los logros sin considerar el contexto o los sentimientos de los demás puede reflejar una falta de empatía. Esto podría hacer que las personas se sientan incómodas o menospreciadas. ¿Cuál piensas que fue la razón por la que el tío que se autopercibía como mujer mencionaba sus logros? Dependiendo de la situación, recibir solo comentarios positivos puede crear expectativas poco realistas. Aunque la intención puede ser positiva, es importante considerar si las personas son sinceras en sus comentarios. Algunas personas pueden sentirse inclinadas a ser amables y evitar críticas constructivas por temor a dañar la relación. Si bien es bueno recibir comentarios positivos, también es beneficioso fomentar la comunicación abierta y honesta. ¿Por qué razón piensas tú que sus familiares y amigos afirmaban que él era mujer? Escuchar algo que te gusta en un podcast no implica automáticamente que debas hacer caso a esa información o seguir las sugerencias dadas. Aunque los podcasts pueden ser una fuente de entretenimiento, educación y perspectivas interesantes, es importante evaluar la información de manera crítica y realista. Aceptar rápidamente la percepción de los demás sobre tu identidad puede llevarte a perder de vista tus propios sentimientos y experiencias. Es importante tomarte el tiempo para reflexionar y comprender tus propias emociones y pensamientos. Sin embargo, se debe tomar en cuenta y de manera seria la objetividad. Es decir, yo puedo sentir que mi identidad es la de un león, pero por más que lo intente, eso no ocurrirá. Lo mismo pasa con los hombres o mujeres que se autoperciben del género que no son. ¿Y tú, qué opinas? Déjamelo saber en los comentarios. Y aquí culmina este video, si te gustó dale like, comenta el video y compártelo. Gracias, hasta luego.